Hey guys, and welcome back to the Learn to Crochet the Easy Way Masterclass. This is a 14-day course that was designed to help you feel confident with the basics of crochet and to help you create the things that you have dreamed of making. I'm your instructor, Sigoni, and today we are going to learn how to keep those darn edges straight. Now, before we get started, make sure to download that free sample of my Learn to Crochet ebook that will be linked in the description box below. The full ebook is 70 plus pages, and with every video, there is a related page that has full lessons, step-by-step -step picture tutorials, both left and right-handed, checklists, reference sheets, and patterns for the projects that we will be completing later in this course. You will also gain access to all of these videos ad-free inside the Teachable platform. Now let's get into lesson six. Remember how I kept telling you that it's a-okay to have wonky edges? If you're having trouble keeping your edges straight on the swatches that we've completed in previous lessons, you're not alone. Most people struggle with this problem, and today we're going to learn how to turn those wonky edges into straight edges. We are going to take the swatches that we completed in lessons four and five and learn how to really recognize those stitches so that we'll further be able to count our stitches, count our rows so that we don't lose track, and also so we can ensure that all of our edges stay straight. Over the past few lessons, so lessons four and five to be exact, at the end of each lesson, I have also included sections where we talk about how to count your stitches and how to count your rows. So make sure that you're fully watching these videos to take advantage of all the knowledge that is given. If you have your swatches sitting in front of you and you notice that your edges are un even, it's because you are either adding or subtracting stitches at the end of your rows. The solution to this problem is just to recognize your stitches and learn how to count them effectively. And so that's what we're going to get into today. So I really hope you kept those swatches. And if you ended up scrapping those swatches like I told you not to, Go ahead and make a swatch for both the single and double crochet. You can just head over, watch those videos, and you can make it in 10 to 20 minutes. And then you can come back here if you want to follow along with me as I do this. So here's a brief overview of what we will learn in today's lesson. We will learn how to count rows by identifying the front and back of a stitch, and this will help you so that you don't lose your place and we will also learn two ways to count the stitch by the top of the stitch and the post of a stitch. For this tutorial, you might need either stitch markers, a bobby pin, or a spare strand of yarn just to help you recognize those stitches. And you'll see what I mean whenever I demonstrate it in today's video. So what we're going to do here is learn how to count the stitches and the rows for each swatch in each stitch. So I have half double crochet, treble crochet, single crochet, and double crochet. So I'm using a few different types of yarn, just so I can show you with both a medium weight yarn and a bulky weight yarn. To count stitches in rows for any stitch, you really just have to learn how to recognize the stitch. You have to really dig into these stitches and just see how they're constructed. Because when you're crocheting, Yes, you're learning how to make the stitch, but you can get lost in how that fabric is actually made. But if you start to really look at your stitches and see how they actually form, then it's easier for you to count your stitches in the long run. And of course, this will definitely come with time, and the more that you crochet, the more you'll be able to recognize these stitches. But this is what's really helped me in learning how to count them, and so I want to share this information with you. Now first, we'll take a look at this treble crochet. So again, we already know that this is the treble because it's the tallest stitch and it has lots of space in between each post. So with any stitch, you can either count by the post or by the top of the stitch. So with tall posts like the treble, it's easier to count by the post. First, the foundation chain does not count as a row, so this would be our first row. Even though we created our chain first and then placed our stitches into that chain, the chain does not count as a row. So our first row is right here, then we have two, three, four, five. This here is the front of the stitch, that's what it looks like, and then this is the back of the stitch, and you can see that it looks just a little bit different. And so that's another way that you can learn how to count your rows, is by recognizing the front and the back of a stitch. So again, the treble's easy, so let's move on to the next one. Here we have the half double crochet. So again, you can still pull these apart, and this is another reason why it's great to have practice swatches, because you're not worried about messing them up. You can really inspect them 
like you're some sort of detective. So what you can do is just pull your stitches apart and you can see each stitch individually. So we have one here, two, three, four. So those are the fronts of the stitches here. And I'm going to use this stitch marker so that I can really show you what these look like. So this stitch that I marked is right here and that is the front of a half double crochet stitch. Now up here I'll show you that this is what the back of a half double crochet stitch looks like. Whenever you pull them apart it's much easier to count your stitches that way. So for the half double crochet, because it's in between the single and the double crochet, you can either count by the post or you can count at the top here. Again, this foundation chain does not count as a row. So our first row is here, then two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So I have seven rows of half double crochet here. You can go ahead and pause the video if you want and see if you can count them too. Now let's take a look at the double crochet. Again, this one, this stitch is easier to recognize because it's a taller stitch and it has a lot of space in between each stitch. So when you pull them apart, you can see each individual stitch. So that is the front of a double crochet. And then you have this one here and that is the back of a double crochet. You can see each row based on the front and the back of the stitch. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So again, I have seven rows for double crochet. Now let's talk about the single crochet. The single crochet is going to be one of the tougher stitches to count because it's the smallest stitch and they're all scrunched together. So this is another reason why it helped me a lot when learning how to count my rows to learn to recognize these stitches. So I will go ahead and show you. This is the front of a single crochet stitch. Right above it. That is the back of a single crochet stitch. And every time I see the stitch, I think that it looks like a little butt. So that's how you can remember that that is the back of a single crochet stitch. So in order to count these rows, you can still pull them apart to see the individual stitches. But if you really look up close, you'll just have to remember that this is the front of the stitch and this is the back of the stitch. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and then the rest I was crocheting into the front loop only so I'm not going to count those. So to practice this yourself go ahead and take a look at the swatches that you've already made in this class and try to count the stitches yourself. Really dive into your swatches and maybe watch yourself as you make these stitches so you can see how it's really being constructed. Learning how to count your stitches and your rows is really going to help you keep your edges even because remember whenever you have uneven edges then that means you either added a stitch or took away a stitch somewhere you weren't supposed to or maybe you skipped a stitch in the middle of the row. So if you feel like you did this or you're struggling with having straight edges then take a good look at your work and see if you can find your mistake. Now one more thing to mention that's really important when it comes to making sure that you have the correct amount of stitches is turning chains. I have another video all about turning chains that you can watch and I'll link that in the description. But for now just know that whenever we're working in rows as you've learned from this course there's always a turning chain at the end of a row or at the beginning of the row if that's what you want to call it. So whenever you have the single crochet you chain one and turn to go on to the next row. With the half double crochet you chain two and turn. And because that chain two doesn't count as a stitch you go straight into that first stitch and that's what you'll learn in lesson eight. So if you haven't seen that yet just wait for that lesson to come out and I'll talk all about that there. But with the double crochet you chain three and then turn your work and that chain three does count as a stitch so that means whenever you're going back to count your stitches you count 
that chain three just like it was a stitch. And that's something that we don't do with the single and the half double crochet. And the same thing with the treble crochet, you chain four and turn at the end of a row and that chain four does count as a stitch as well. So that's another thing that you should look out for whenever you're counting your stitches. Now today's challenge is going to be to make and inspect your swatches. So if you weren't already doing this with me throughout this video, I want you to try and do this yourself. So either take the swatches that you've already created or take the time to practice and create a few more swatches. I don't want you to rip out stitches from your other swatches, I would rather you create new swatches, that way you take advantage of this time and really practice these stitches. Now before, for lessons four and five, your goal was to learn how to create the stitch. But in this lesson, our goal is to learn how to create swatches that have straight edges, just by counting. Whenever you're looking at your swatch when you're finished, ask yourself these questions. Can you count how many stitches you have in each row or just by looking at the swatch? Can you recognize your stitches by seeing the front and the back of each row? These are some things that will help you to identify your fabric and become more familiar with it. That way, in the future, it will be easier for you to achieve those straight edges. At the end of each tutorial video for all stitches that we'll learn in this lesson, I include how to count each stitch and row, so make sure you watch to the end of those videos. There's also another video that I will link where I talk about using stitch markers to keep your edges straight. And again, in this course, I've mentioned this a few times, but that video is specifically talking about stitch markers, so if you need a further explanation, you can find it in that video. Now that is it for lesson six. In the next lesson, we are going to be learning how to read crochet patterns. I know that sounds a little intimidating, but I am going to break it down as easy as I can. So take a deep breath and let's get through this together. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments because that is what I'm here for. I'm here to help you learn how to do this awesome craft. So please take advantage of my love for teaching. Again, check the description for a free sample of my Learn to Crochet ebook. And as always, I am your instructor, Sigoni, and I will see you in tomorrow's lesson.